Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. This week we're going to take a look at one of the lesser known functions of FPP, and that is its ability to run a little touch screen monitor. Now FPP has the ability to run one of these in what's called kiosk mode, and today we're going to take a look and see if we can get it up and running. To run this, we're going to be using a Raspberry Pi 4. This is a one gigabyte variant, um, not common, but they do exist. I've done the basic install of FPP 9.2 on it so far, and then just run it through the upgrade process because there were some, a few additional bits to bring in. So that's ready to go, basic config and nothing more. And then to demo it itself, we've got the Raspberry Pi Touch Display 2, which is a little five inch uh, touch monitor or touch display that claims it's compatible with the Raspberry Pi from the Pi 1B onwards. So that's the 40 pin GPIO versions, not the original uh, funny looking one. Now this comes with a touch display, a power cable, uh, ribbon cables and some screws. Uh, it has a five inch display. It has an 80 degree viewing angle apparently, uh, 720 by what, uh, 1280 pixel resolution, uh, true multi-touch capacitive touch up to five finger touch. Um, and yeah, there we go. So let's get this thing unboxed and see what actually comes in here. So, oh. Here we go. So we've got a nice oh, static bag. And in here we've got, let's have a look. We've got a little goodie bag of a couple of ribbon cables. Now we've got two different ribbon cables because uh, the different pies have different size uh, little connectors here. I can't remember what these are called, but the display connector is different size on some of them. And so we've got different type of cable for those. We have a little power cable, which is going to hook onto GPIO pins and plug into the panel. And then we've got some screws to hold it all together. So if we have a look at the screen itself, we can see that we've got, uh, let's get it opened up, it's in a bit of anti-static bubble. There we go. So we've got the screen here. And if I hold it at a slight angle, we can see it's got quite a large bezel with quite a small, a small screen in the middle, which is going to be fun. And then on the back, we've got four mounting points for actually mounting the screen itself, and then four standoffs that we can use for mounting uh, the Raspberry Pi. So let's, I think it's supposed to be that way around. There we go. And then we've got the, obviously the connector here for connecting the display ribbon cable back to the Pi and the power input. So let's have a look at getting this plugged in. So I'm going to let's get this open. Now, I think we need the big one for this. Yeah. So let's have a look. It looks like both ends are identical. I can't see any differences here on the two ends. So that should be good. So that will go in there. There's no instructions in the box. It's just the um, the doodles on the back here that show you which way round it needs to go. Uh, so yeah, that's that's all we have to go on. So that should be straightforward. Now let's get. Yeah, our standard to mini. So that's going to be one for uh, Pi 0, 2, things like that. The smaller Pi is not the full size one. So we'll put that to one side. We've got some screws. So let's get this started. So I'm going to pull these that back and get this ribbon cable in. So let's just plug that in there. There we go. Give it a wiggle, in she goes, beautiful. 
and then just pull the two ends back. There we go. Nice, so that's in there nice and snug now. That's not coming out. I've got to get the power cable plugged in. It's got this mini JST style connector. So let's plug her in. There we go, that's in. And then we're onto the Pi itself, which I presume is going to sit this way up. Oh, it shows it, shows it round that way. Okay, oh, that makes sense. We've got the display connector there. So let's get that hooked up. And I've got ah, to get into these screws. Now I only want four of these, I think. We've got, they're all the same size, so that's good. So let's grab the screwdriver and there we go. All right, let's grab a screwdriver. There we go. Let's get these in. There we go. One. We'll go opposites to get it lined up. Okay. Two. Three. There we go, that's the screws done. Now we're on to power, which is going to come from the GPIO pins up here. The one uh, bottom right in the video here is positive, and then two along is negative. So we can plug that in. Uh, and I missed one. There we go. That's going to sit on there like that. Now these wires are the tiniest little things. They're uh, thinner than even seed pixels, so they're going to be. You're going to have to be a bit careful with those. And then we've got there we are our display connector to plug in here. This is going to be a little bit fiddly. Round she comes. I think that's dropped back in. Yeah, that's that's up. Let's drop that in. There we go, that's dropped into there. We'll give that a squeeze at both ends. Perfect. So that is now that is now hooked up nicely into the display connector on the Pi and wraps around underneath. There's a bit of a gap here, so we can get to the SD card that's sat in the end of the Pi here, although it's going to be a bit fiddly. You might need a pair of pliers in there to get to those. So that's all ready for us to, to power up. So let's get a, an Ethernet cable in and hook that up. And some power. And let's see what, what happens. There we go, we've got our power light on and she's waking up. If we tip it upside down, let's have a look. There it comes. It's really small. That's really, really small. Um, but we have an FPP login screen. So we've got the display output working. That is, that is miniature. That's about three millimeters tall, that text. So absolutely tiny, but it's working. So here's FPP. Let's get that set up now for kiosk mode and see what we get on the screen. So I'm going to go into status control, FPP settings. I'm going to go into services. Ah, and I've been tripped up already. The first thing we need to do, we need to go to UI and set UI to advanced. Then we can go into services and here's the area for kiosk mode. So let's go for enable kiosk. Are we sure? Yes, we are. So she's now pulling in over the internet the additional packages that are going to be needed to run this because it involves a full UI, uh, user interface on the Pi. 
there are quite a few. It obviously needs to run a little web browser and it's going to be Chromium for this. That needs to be pulled in the whole X operating system uh, add-ons for the GUI, uh, the graphical user interface, all need to be pulled down. So they're being pulled down now and it's busy doing its thing. Now you might be asking already, what is the point of this? Why would you want this? And I could see this working if you've got a big buttons plugin running, something like that, where you can get users to select different options. Or if you just want a handy uh, thing to start different sequences, maybe you're running a slightly bigger show where you want to run different sequences and you want a handy device for your admin just to press go on a button to make it so then this might be for you. It's not going to be for everybody, I'll give you that. A lot of people will just wander around with their mobile phone and they'll just drive FPP that way. So we'll see. It's now got to the point of it's enabling auto login and enabling Chromium, which is the web browser that it's going to be running on internally. So let's see how that does. I think it's finished. So I'm going to go for close and go for a reboot, which is what it's asking for. So let's have a look, let's have a reboot and we'll see. So let's see what it comes back with now as it reboots. Here we go, we've got some text coming up at the top. Uh, that's the regular text. It started FPP. We've got a whole raft of setup y stuff that it's doing. And that's now disappeared. Oh, we've got a UI start. Here we go. There we are. We've got FPP on our little pie screen here. Now this is quite fun. So let's see if this uh, will do its thing. Um, doesn't it? Oh yeah, we've got the full Now my laptop over on the left here, on my left here, has just uh, finished waking up with the full web UI, and we have a slightly cut down version of it on the screen here. So let's see if the touch screen now works, and whether we need to do anything else. So we're up and running in portrait mode, but we don't have a mouse yet. If I pull my finger across the touch screen, uh, absolutely nothing happens, and we can see. Uh, that the mouse icon in the middle of the screen is staying put. So it looks like we need to update the Pi config, uh, underlying Pi config, to tell it that we've got the touch screen 2 connected. And I'm going to take the opportunity whilst we're doing that to rotate the screen 90 because I think that might work better for my usage. Later that same evening. Now it was at this point that I started to get a little bit grumbly with the screen. I've made the entries that were suggested on Raspberry Pi's website to the boot config so that it should recognize the screen and the touch element as well. Made those, I booted the Pi and it didn't seem to want to know. So I messaged Stuart Leddingham, one of the FPP devs, for any thoughts and he just came back with suggesting that I double check the DT overlay settings. and. I powered up the Pi because I'd done plugged it when it'd gone out and it worked. So let's see if it's still working. I'm going to power it back up now. Power here, there we go. So let's let's give it some juice and we'll see if it behaves now. We should in just a few moments get the the boot config. There we go. There's a boot up sequence starting as we would normally expect to see. Here we go, we've got FPP kicking off and the Pi once again needs rotating still so it won't run in landscape mode at the moment but it does run in portrait and 
If we're now up and running, I should be able to click the menu in the corner, and I can. Touch screen is now operating. So I can go to status control and network, for example, and I've missed it because I'm not lined up with it. Let's have a, there we go, status control, network, no, missed it again. A screen this size really isn't going to work very well for trying to drive FPP like this. You need a bigger screen. Whether you might have smaller fingers than me, but um, there we go, I've got the network page this time. But this isn't where I think a little screen like this is going to excel. I think where it would work well is something like the big button pr plugin. And I've got one of those set up. Here we go. So here is our big button plugin. I've only got one button at the moment linked to a short demo sequence that just has a pause and then it comes back. But if I click the demo sequence, we can see that it executes and I could see it executing on the Wayne FPP website, which I've got on the laptop here. So I think that's where this little thing will work well. We can get big buttons doing different things and you can get them to change at different times of day. And then somebody can just come along and push the button and away it goes. Now it has all the mountings on the back, the mounting holes on the back to build it into a larger display of some sort. I'm not sure it's gonna be rugged enough to leave outside unattended, but if you're outside looking after your show, then this might be the sort of thing that you could look for. So here we go, this is the Raspberry Pi Touch Display version two. This is the five inch version, and there is also a seven inch version available as well. And it gives you a nice little touch screen, which you can make do things and you can build into a show, um, uh, maybe a donation box or something like that. There we go, that's it for this week. I hope you're having fun. Uh, I hope your Halloween shows are all coming together and, and you're almost ready for the big day there. Halloween, of course, is always a good uh, first show of the season. Even if you're not really into Halloween, it gives you a fantastic opportunity get most of the show set up and iron out any bugs, niggles, uh, problems before your main Christmas season gets going. Have a good one, take it easy, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.